Hello and welcome to another video. Today we'll hopefully be explaining a very, I don't know, beginner be basic sort of video, but I'll also show you some cool stuff that uh, is a little bit more advanced towards the end, uh, where you'll be able to use the past statement in other ways. Uh, and some places where you won't need it, but some people do it anyway. Uh, but yeah, let's let's jump into that. All right, so let's just open up a Python file and get started here. So what is the past statement? So the past statement in Python is a statement which does nothing. <laughs> and you might ask, well, what's the point of something that does nothing? And pass is uh, useful in a couple of contexts. The most important one is when you need a statement syntactically and nothing else really helps you out there. And so it's kind of like a, a placeholder statement for you know making sure that the syntax is valid. Uh, I'll show some examples of that uh, right now, actually. <laughs> so let's uh, let's take a, the most basic class that you can ever write, uh, a class that's named C. And I'll actually move this down a little so you guys can see it. Uh, a class named C, but it has no body at all. And, uh, you know, no methods, no attributes, no functions, etc. And this is actually invalid syntax. If we were to run t.py, you'll see that we get a syntax error, unexpected end of file while parsing. And this is basically what pass was born to do. Um, the pass statement here allows you to take a block statement, which classes a block statement, and, you know, or a block construct. I don't know, is it is a statement? I guess it's kind of a statement, uh, but it allows you to fill in the body of that such that it's valid syntax. So pass here is you know, a statement, but it uh, does nothing. And you'll see that now this, this compiles correctly. I mean, it does technically compile, but usually when you talk about Python, you don't really think about compiling code, but it is actually being compiled in a way. Um, but yeah, and uh, I mean, the same is true for all of the other blocks statements. So like if you had a function, uh, this is a, a syntax error without, without some body, uh, you know, for as well, you know, without, without some body, you would need pass, etc. Uh, and there's, you know, with, while, async for, async def, uh, are there any others? No async class. I think that's all of them. I'm probably forgetting one. Someone's screaming at their screen like, Anthony, why don't you know about this statement? And it's like, I do know. I just on the spot, you know? Uh, but yeah, the, the past statement allows you to make this syntax valid here. Now, uh, these on their own don't seem all that useful. Like, why would you define a class that you know doesn't have a body? You're like, why would you have a function that doesn't define a body? Uh, or why would you have a for loop that doesn't have a body? Uh, this one, actually, I have a good example for it. These ones, mm, I don't really have a great example for it, uh, other than using them as, like, placeholder functions when you don't actually care about the contents of the function, or maybe the, the function is supposed to do nothing. Um, and uh, there's... Yeah, let, let's, let's first show an example for the for loop where it is actually kind of useful. Um... And for that, we're going to have to make a generator function, which is a little bit advanced, and if you don't understand what's going on there, um, the generator part isn't that important. It's more it's more what we're going to be using pass for. So let's make a generator uh, that is going to, you know, yield out some values. And, you know, as a side effect, it's going to print hello in between yielding some of the values. So that's all out of order. Let's put that in order. So this is a generator which yields one, then prints hello, then yields two, then prints world, then yields three. And if we were to run over this generator for i in gen and print i, uh, this will, as it yields the value here, uh, we'll be able to print it here. So we'll print one hello two world three. <laughs> if I wrote this correctly, yeah. So one one hello two world three. Um, and you know, this is just kind of like a silly example where I'm printing stuff, uh, but it's possible that you might want to execute this inner part without actually, you know, printing its values or using anything with it. And if you just call the generator normally, like, like so, you'll see that we don't print anything at all. And that's because generators are lazy. They don't, uh, they don't evaluate their contents until you, you know, loop over them, uh, or call next on them or other stuff like that. 
And uh, one, I mean, <laughs> the, the, the spoiler answer to this question is you can exhaust a generator just by looping over it. And this would be kind of the bare minimum to loop over a generator. Uh, we need in. Uh, this this would be the bare minimum to loop over a generator. However, you'll notice that this is syntax error. And you can put the pass statement there, which makes this valid syntax. So now if we, if we run this code, uh, it should print just hello world. And we don't really care about the yielded values here. You'll notice that we're discarding them using this dummy underscore variable. And you'll see if we run through this generator, it prints hello world. There's actually another way to do this without using a for loop and without using pass. Uh, you can call, you know, tuple on this or list on this as well. Uh, and this is because tuple and list both take an iterable as their first parameter and will convert that into a tuple. Uh, but this is actually worse and should be slower because this is actually building a tuple object out of these three values and then immediately discarding it because uh, you know, this doesn't get assigned anywhere. But the side effect of construction will still run this generator. So you can see, well, this one came from the for loop, this one came from the tuple, and this came. So this is like one case where you might want pass. Uh, another case might be if you have like a, a dummy function, which we talked about before. So like maybe you want to, you know, have a function that has some interface and you want uh, frobs or something, <laughs> and you actually want this function to do nothing. You can you can use pass. Uh, and this this uh, when you call it c dot frobs, you'll see that it you know it does successively does nothing. Uh, and interestingly, you can actually have as many passes as you want, and it will still successfully do nothing. Now, if I remember correctly, the pass statement doesn't actually end up in the code in the output code at all. And we can again uh, look at our friend the disassembler and this dot this dot probs. Yeah, so you'll see like even though I have you know three, four, five, six pass statements in here, the function is compiled to only uh, the implicit return none at the end. And so the the pass statement doesn't actually influence the code at all. Oh man, I just remembered another <laughs> set of blocks. I forgot about if, else if, and, and else, um, or elif, because it's Python. Um, <laughs> I was talking earlier, but whatever. Blocks. Uh, another case is in if statements, <laughs> where you have a case where you intentionally want to do nothing. Uh, so maybe you have like, um, I don't know what's the what's the canonical if statement example like fizzbuzz. Uh, no, that would, that one you still want to do stuff eagerly. Uh, maybe we have an if you haven't heard of fizzbuzz, it's basically uh, you loop over the numbers between zero and hundred, and if it's divisible by three, you print fizz. If it's divisible by five, you print buzz, and if it's divisible by both, you print fizzbuzz. And so you know you, you end up with like if i mod three is equal or yeah is equal to man <laughs> doing fizzbud live fizzbuzz live uh, and i mod five equals zero then you gotta print fizzbuzz well if my i mod three is zero and mod is just the you know, remainder essentially uh, divide it by three and if there's a remainder um yeah and checking the remainder equal to zero means that it divides evenly Print pring, print fizz, LFI mod five, print buzz. Uh, so this is kind of your fizz buzz problem. And maybe we want an exception to this somehow. Uh, so let me just show you that this, this works first. You can see, how we, and we should print the, the number so you guys can see. I... And instead of going to 100, we'll probably just go to like 20. That way it all fits on screen. Actually, let's go to 50. Sure. Uh, and you'll see like at zero, which is divisible by both three and five, because zero divided by anything is still zero except for zero. I don't remember. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, but you can see like this is this is kind of your trivial or your, your normal FISBOS output. Uh, but maybe, let's make this a silly problem, maybe you want to skip 15 for whatever reason. So uh, one way that you could do this is you could write an if statement that checks exactly 15 
Um, but we want to do nothing here. And so we're going to intentionally just put a pass statement here. Uh, and so when we run this again, uh, you'll see that we skipped 15. So this is, this is another case where you might want to use pass. Um, <laughs> and now we'll talk about a case which uh, is a little bit more advanced and one that just kind of annoys me. And I'm hoping it get fixed, gets fixed someday. And it might already be fixed and I'm just <laughs> grumbling about nothing. Uh, but often when you put a breakpoint in a function, so breakpoint is a way to trigger the debugger. Um, yeah, and it happened this time. So even though the breakpoint is here and maybe I want to look at, you know, the code above me, uh, the debugger has actually skipped ahead all the way to the beginning of this loop again. And I find that a little bit annoying and sometimes it's, it's harder to see. Uh, like if you were putting a breakpoint in here, um, I think it also does the same thing. Oops, let's get rid of dash i. Uh, yeah, so see how the, the breakpoint jumped to the beginning of the function, even though I'm I'm actually trying to debug this block of code here. And so I found that if you put just a, an ordinary pass there that does nothing, and you try this again, now the debugger will, you know, put you in a more logical place next to this this block. <laughs> this is kind of like little tiny pro tip of, of Anthony is grumbly about the debugger. Um, but that's 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 one other useful place. Uh, now let's talk about places where some people use pass, but they really don't need to. And a funny thing about expressions in Python. So let's uh, just keep this example, but we will move it down out of the way. Uh, so one place where I see people use pass, and sometimes it's you know unnecessary, um, is when defining classes. And so let's make a class. I don't know some exception type. Uh, I don't know, foo error that derives from exception, sure. And, you know, on its own, you do need pass here if you're not defining any particular body here. And this is a pretty common idiom when you're making exceptions, you know, derive from exception and name your error. Uh, but, you know, unless you need any special construction or string or whatever, you don't really need to add any methods here. It's fine enough to just define your own separate type. But what I see people do a lot is uh, when they're defining a doc string, so maybe the foo error means that something from, oh, that's off screen, whatever. <laughs> that problem, <laughs> sure, there we go. There's a doc string that fits on screen. Uh, and I see this happen a lot. And there's actually an interesting thing about Python and, and the way doc strings work and actually any expression in Python. Um, this pass statement actually doesn't need to be here. And you'll see, you know, if we if we run this, um, oh well, it's actually we'll get we will get rid of the uh, this buzz down here because I don't actually want to run this. Uh, if we run this, you'll see that foo error dot doc. Uh, you know, it has this doc string, and this this works fine with the pass. If we remove the pass, it also works fine. Um, and you'll see again foo error dot doc, and we get our doc string. And the interesting part here, and it took me a long time to realize this as well. Like I, I used to, I used to do this as well with with uh, the unnecessary pass there. But uh, an interesting thing about Python is all expressions are valid statements. Now, is that is that true? I think it's mostly true. There's, I mean, you could you could of course be a little bit pedantic and say that like an assignment expression is not a valid statement, but you can put it in parentheses and now it is. Um, but Assignment expressions are, are a whole different can of worms. Uh, but yeah, any any expression in Python, including just an ordinary string expression, and you can just put strings anywhere. Uh, you can see I actually just put a giant string down here and it didn't, it didn't do anything. You can also put numbers, ellipsis, you know, floats, etc. And these are all statements, uh, and they can fill the same spot as pass. So we can just put the number five here, <laughs> and, and that will indeed work, and you'll see, you know, it doesn't. It doesn't become the doc string or anything, but uh, this is this is valid syntax and it runs correctly because five is a statement. Uh, now it's only being used as kind of a placeholder here, but um, just kind of a, a, a silly thing here. You might ask what what the triple dot is. Uh, it fills a similar role as pass in Python, but uh, can be used in some other context. Maybe I'll make a video about that as well. But anyway, hopefully you learned some stuff. Hopefully this was a. Uh, you know, a little eye-opening. <laughs> Appreciate pass more than you might think about it. 
Uh, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. This was sent in by Catherine on Twitch. Or is it on Twitter? I don't know. One of the two. Uh, but thank you for the question, and uh, if you guys have additional questions or other stuff you want me to explain, leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter or Twitch. But thank you all for watching, and have a good one.